Okay, so you guys can, from that angle, clearly see the two blue areas that we are talking about. So scraping involves using a tool like this. This is homemade. It's from a very large bastard file. Um, this was my father's file, and this thing is old and completely dull from, you know, I love my dad to death, but... Uh, he throws all of his files in the same drawer and so they all bang around each other and they're all dull. Uh, but anyway, I ground both edges here relieved and I heat treated this thing by keeping the front here, which I want to keep hard. I kept that clamped up in copper jaws, uh, soft jaws on my father's vise. And uh, that kept this from getting heat treated and then I just used a propane torch to temper all of this way back to, uh, to blue so that there would be some spring, a little bit of spring in uh, this region and that will help with, uh, you know, with trying to keep this thing at a proper angle as I use pressure to scrape material away. But anyway, the basic geometry of this is the top here and the bottom are both ground flat and smooth and then the edge is at a bit of a radius. This is kind of exaggerated. I probably should have done a little bit flatter radius, a little bit less of a radius, but um, it works. And the edge here, this is the really important part. The edge here is ground and honed just like I would, you know, grind and hone a, uh, a plane blade or a chisel. Um, this is sharp 90 degrees or thereabouts, plus or minus a couple degrees is fine. And uh, you want that, this this is your cutting edge. It's the same thing as using a, a plane or a chisel. This is your cutting edge. Um, if it's a plane or a chisel, you're ground at 25 or 30 degrees, depending on what you're cutting. But generally, the harder the material that you're cutting, the steeper the angle that you want. So softwoods, the 25 degree angle is perfectly fine. If you're going to be cutting dominantly hardwoods, you want 30 degrees. Well, guess what? We're cutting cast iron, so we're at 90 degrees. So that should be a, you know, hopefully that's an easy way for you guys to remember um, the relationship between cutting edge angle geometry and hardness of, of the wood that you're going to be cutting. So what we do is we use our cutting edge here to carve away material and just that little tiny bit I'm not sure if you guys can make that out but there's cast iron right here on my fingertip because I just cut away some material some of that blue area you can hear that cutting and by removing these blue areas, what we do is we flatten this thing out a little bit by a bit. This is a little more challenging than the number four plane that I did because uh, we have interruptions in our surface. We have the corrugated sole here. A lot of people don't like corrugated plane soles. So they're not very popular in the collector world, but uh, you know a lot of people say that they clog up with chips or sawdust, shavings, etc., etc. As you go along, I yeah I, I disagree with that. I mean it's not been my experience. Um, I don't have any complaints at all about using a corrugated sole. Um, the manufacturers will have told you back in the day that they added the corrugations in order to give you a lighter weight plane because obviously there's less material there and you would still have a rigid sole you know, because the the fluting essentially of that surface will add rigidity uh, so some folks will actually take the extreme of filling in the corrugations with wood glue or epoxy and 
and lapping it flat again. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get this thing flat. So we're going to take all the blue off and we're going to retouch it to the surface plate. And as we go along, the blue region will expand and eventually cover the entire thing. In the case of our smoothing plane, which is dirty, in the case of this guy, we've got dots of contact uniformly spread all throughout the whole thing. Um, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll uh, touch this to the plate and show you guys that, but I'm going to keep working on this. We're going to do a lot of editing here, you know, as far as getting making this video a little short because you guys get the general idea of how this works and uh, you also get the general idea that this is a pretty slow process. If the low spot is minimal, if it's, you know, I, I can't measure how, how far out this is, but if it's only, you know, two or three thousandths of an inch out, then this won't take very long because a little bit of removal of the blue area will make a significant difference. Um, but I don't know what that's, that's looking like, so I can't make any predictions there. But I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video here, and as I make significant progress on uh, increasing the blue area, then I'll, I'll tune you guys in, because I don't want to make a really, really, really long video. You guys probably uh, skip through it. I sure as heck would. Alright, we'll be back. So here's our progress after uh, like an hour and a half of working on it. You can see the rather significant reach that we've made in the back. Moving up to the front, looking really good. We're uh, almost all the way down to the mouth, actually in a couple places here where my finger is. We're making contact at the mouth, also over here. There's some, there's some spots around there, so we're starting to get pretty flat. So that tells me that um, it's really not that far out. It's going to take work. But looking over it, I can see spots here, here. That's about it in the middle. But uh, we're getting there. This is going to take a while, but it's relaxing work, frankly. I'm just down in the basement listening to music while I scrape away at this. But it is time for me to go to bed because i got to work tomorrow. So we will be back at it tomorrow, and uh, we'll keep on going. Oh, I should also note that uh, these videos are actually shot on my little uh, Canon PowerShot SD750. This is an old camera. Bought it in 2008 for uh, motorcycle road trips across the country. So. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how this video turns out once I uh, get these on the computer and edit them from the little viewfinder here. It looks okay. Alright, stay tuned. So here we are. Uh, looking really good. It's after about four hours of scraping. Really good contact on the front, pretty much all the way to the mouth, which is awesome. And then we are making contact along this edge here pretty much all the way to the back, and then in the back a couple inches we got fantastic coverage. However, there is a, a hollow right here down the middle of the plate, and we got to bring that out. So ultimately, I'm going to call this the end of uh, Soul Flattening Video 1. So thank you very much for watching up to this point. I'm going to do a second video covering the, uh, the latter half of this process. And uh, that'll come out. I'm going to post both of these on the same day because I've been way behind on posting videos. Um, I, my parents were up for the weekend. And, uh, yeah, I really didn't get any, you know, any work done on this thing except a little bit here and there in the evenings when my parents were just watching TV at my house. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend this process for everyone. It's not for everyone. Some people just want to, you know, take the plane on a, a piece of plate glass with sandpaper, run it back and forth until, 
looks uh, it looks flat and it's perfectly fine. Uh, it'll perform just fine, I'm sure. But I I really love the whole overkill thing. I love trying to uh, you know take things to the next level and see just what degree of precision I can get, especially in this context when I'm just dealing with super simple hand tools, a flat granite surface plate, some blue grease, and this homemade scraping tool. And then the whole thing is clamped up here in my, my Black & Decker Workmate 200. Um, yeah, it's a really simple process. I'm not wasting any sandpaper at all. I mean, none whatsoever. That can get costly. Um, yeah, I mean, this scraper, I just I made it for free. So, it's up to you. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, feel free to comment. I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts. And, uh, well, we'll see you on the next video. So, take care.